All right, all right. We are live. Let's see, I'm that in there. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, you guys are doing well today. Um, praying everybody gets to tune in tonight. Um, we have a lesson that was by request. Uh, we got the question for somebody that gave us a topic as far as exposing the deception by music. Um, but before we get into it, of course, we'll, you know, give people some time, hope with a word of prayer, and uh, maybe even discuss some things. Um, hopefully you guys are doing well today. Uh, as you know, we're still going through this whole COVID situation, but we're making it through. And Lord willing, I believe we'll come out all right on the other side. Oh, uh, it's a sad day for a lot of us um, due to the death of Robbie Zacharias, uh, one of the, you know, great. American apologists, speakers, you know, it is actually spoken at Billy Graham Crusades and other things. And um, I've enjoyed um, many of his lectures. So I'm kind of sorry to hear that today. But, um, you know, trusting that God is going to bless and his people are going to be able to continue to do the work that God has us to do. Hey, Foolish for Christ, how you doing? All right. Hey. Glad you made it this evening. Glad you made it. I'm going to post also on um, Facebook because our other um, computer's updating. So we won't be on Facebook tonight. We'll only be on YouTube. Hey, how you doing, Coretta Durham? All right, glad you made it. Glad you made it. Um, okay. Once it gets on, you good. We'll go ahead and post on here. We are live. We are live now. Ah. All right, guys. Give me one second. I'm just going ahead and posting that we are live now on YouTube to tonight. Hope good. everybody's doing well. Normally, we go on on Mondays. But um, we ran into some situations. Plus, we also had a storm yesterday um, in our area. So we're here tonight. And hopefully, uh, all that can will come and join us. Hi, Sister Tawana. Um, Sister Coretta, thank you all for coming and joining us tonight as well. All right. I was just finished right now. I got to put a time because the last time I put the real live on YouTube and I um, didn't. Somebody said, what time? Yeah. So I'm putting right now. We're live on YouTube right now. Uh-oh. Let me sure I did that right. Let's see if that works. All right. So like again, guys, hopefully um, you're doing well. We're excited about today. Yep, it went through. So prayerfully, they'll be able to tune in tonight. Cool. All right. So um, we're going to open with a brief word of prayer before we get into our lesson. So let us all be agreed. Father, we thank you for blessing us to come together tonight. We thank you, Lord, for giving the inspiration through your word, Father God, and by your spirit. We pray that you bless those that have tuned in tonight, that, Lord, we would be able to share all that you've given us and that it will be a blessing to your people. Bless those, Father, who didn't get to make it tonight for various reasons. And, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that your son will be lifted up and that he would be glorified. And it's in your son, Jesus, name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All right. Hey, Shayla, glad hey, you made Shayla. it. Glad you made it. Hey, Gary, glad you made it as well, brother. Amen. All right. Okay, so tonight we're talking about exposing the deception by music. And right. uh, this is like a topic we could go on for, for hours, but we're not. We're just going to hit a few main points um, yes. to kind of help you as Christians trying to decide what's good to listen to, what's not good to listen to. Um, right. You know, just kind of kind of give you some um, biblical scriptures and mm -hmm. some personal experiences and just helping you to understand what's going on in the musical realm. Amen. So go ahead. And I was just going to say that I'm um, just kind of give you guys um, a little bit of understanding. Someone had asked this question in one of the videos. So we decided we were going to cover that subject right. tonight. And both of us have had experience in the past in music, uh, working, you know, professionally as well as working behind the scenes and working out in the industry. So there's a lot that yeah. kind of goes in with this. So prayerfully tonight, we're going to cover those things. We, we may not be able to cover every single topic, but hopefully just get a good foundation and a basis for you to go by as you're led by the Spirit of God. So we'll just give a brief um, overview of our musical background. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of go from there. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. All right, so this I go first. <laughs> so I um, I actually started um, music, started working in music when I was about fourteen years old. Uh, moved to Atlanta. Um, some of you know the name, but it's the story from Blaze of Glory. Um, I was a battle rapper um, by the name of Carefree, or just a rapper in general, or MC at the beginning. And I would um, record songs and work in studios, and you know met 
um, many of celebrity people and, you know, got to go to houses of people and hang out. And I got to do a tour, which they call the Chitlin Circuit, where you tour like through the smaller cities. You don't get to go to like the L.A., the New York, the big cities. But um, I was able to eventually get on national television. Um, it was the first televised Blaze battle, the first televised hip hop battle on cable television. And it was on HBO. So I was able to do that and um, the Comic View and a couple of other shows as an MC, a couple of magazine publications. And the Lord called me out around 2001. And it was that year that I gave my heart to Christ and I left the business as I was supposed to be scheduled to tour to Germany. And I ended up quitting on them. <laughs> okay. right. So that's sort of some of my background as far as the um, being involved, I guess, in hip hop. We didn't get to talk about the gospel yet. Hopefully we bring that in. And I can. Okay. So um, my introduction to music came earlier in life because I was brought up in the church and my mom was very instrumental in the congregation we were a part of. And so I, I was, you know, one of those little church girls um, brought up singing in the choir. And that was my early start of music. It was on the gospel you know, end of the spectrum. And in our home, that's all we played was Christian music or gospel music. So that was my introduction to music. As I, um, when I married Micah, um, now, I mean, before that, you know, being in high school and being with other kids, I'm introduced with secular music, you know, so right. I'm not just uh, I walking with around with a box <laughs> over my head, like, oh, what is that? You know, so um, I did have an idea. And there also was a pool, and we'll get into that, um, too, to, go, towards yeah. that um, style of music, you know, right. that um, came through a, a fleshly draw, you know. Yes. But as I grew my relationship with God, um, that pool was that court was kind of severed or disconnected mm -hmm. and Micah and I when we got married we got more into music and I started writing writing for our church choir right. and wanting to sing that type of song and we got into songwriting for some professional artists um in the music industry on the gospel side on the part. gospel side exactly. <laughs> yeah, switched up on um, it. writing writing music for the Lord and making music um Build a recording yeah, studio. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah, we build a recording studio. This is where we were recording this now in our yeah, was our music group, right? <laughs> so um we we did that work with some artists, and then I decided uh, we decided that I would be an artist and sing the songs that we wrote. And so um did that for a while. Um did some TV uh, appearances and some, some shows radio. and radio. Yeah. And that lasted for a season until the Lord let me know that's not the path he had me on. And so now um, just still praising God in our home right. and with our local congregation, um, the worship leader there. So that's a little bit of history of our background in music right. um, from both from both worlds. I started in gospel and he started in secular. And so. Yeah, and I grew up listening to secular. <laughs> Our household was a collage of different things because I'm one of seven, uh, well, seven siblings in all, or six children, six siblings, seven children in all. So because of that, uh, I'm number six out of the seven. So growing up, I was able to hear multiple genres, even from my father's style of music to my aunt, to my sisters, my brothers, the older ones, uh, even up to my current generation. Right, so I became right. kind of a hip hop historian for my generation when I was younger because I knew the origins based on my older brother being in college around the time that the first, um, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, all of them started coming out. Right, right. All right. So that's just the history of the background as far as what we know of music. And um, I've actually went to school also for music. Um, that was what my um, degree was actually in, was in music. All right. So, uh, I said, Michael, were you a uh, Christian? No, I was not. Ironically, Ed, I grew up in the church. Um, and I, I know when I was younger, I tried to give my heart to God. But as I got older, you know, I fell away. And by the time I got into hip hop, I was like just strictly battle rapping and like fighting. I would be in the clubs cutting up. And like, I, I, I never, um, I never really like, like I went to church because my mother made me, but I didn't make a commitment or a uh, rededicate my life and give my heart to God at the time. I was I was out there rapping, battling, robbing, stealing, and fornicating, doing all the bad things that rappers do until God called me out. But that was a very good question. 
right. I was raised Christian, ironically, you know, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't a good example. He was raised in a Christian home. Yes. Yeah, but he didn't. But I didn't profess, you know, hope in Christ. I didn't really understand until I got older anyway, um, when I heard the gospel preached. All right. right. So when when looking at the question, um, exposing the deception by music, when we think about music, it plays a really big part of our lives. Yes. You know, um, when we get in the car, some of us turn on the radio instantly. Right. When we're watching a movie, you know, it's it's music playing in the background through commercials. It's right. music playing in the background. And go shopping in stores. Exactly. In the mall, you hear music playing. Right. Where you go. And so right. what is this music doing? Right. Um, what is it used for? A lot of times um, we use music to, well, it's used to encourage. Yes. You know? And a lot of times you find that in songs that we hear at church to encourage the believer, you know, yes. to help somebody feel good about themselves. Um, messages like you're an overcomer, you know, you can do all things and mm -hmm. you are loved. Right. Um, but there's also a music that carries a tone of seduction, That's you true. know, trying to, um, get somebody to go along with what, what you, whatever your agenda is. Correct. Um, uh, uh, music to calm. You might be trying to put your baby to sleep. And so mm -hmm. you wouldn't play anything loud. Um, you would play some calm music to kind of calm and bring peace to the spirit. Right. Or to motivate. They're trying to work out. Right. You play right. some upbeat. It's going to work exactly. out. <laughs> exactly. So you might play an upbeat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, song. So music is also used to entertain us. True. And to indoctrinate us, right. and and that's that's the part that we are exposing the indoctrination that comes along with listening to music because music um, is sending a message um, right. through a song, mm -hmm. and what and, and questions we can ask and you just but at any time okay. like who or what is this song glorifying right and right. so that's when we get into um, really breaking down the song. You know, right. what are the lyrics to the song? Or what was the intent behind the creator of the song? Right. Because some people create particular songs for particular purposes mm -hmm. um, to invoke certain emotions or certain things out of people. Right. Exactly. So um, we as Christians, we listen to songs that glorify God. Amen. And we can recognize songs that glorify God because they sing about him. They sing about all the wonderful things he's done. Um the songs lead us to a place of worship. You know, mm -hmm. you have um, songs that make you just want to lift up your hands and praise him and just just be in a place of just meditating on how good he is. Amen. You know, you may get songs that make you want to shout, you know, or maybe <laughs> uh, shed a tear, you know, because it hit you right here in the heart. But at the end of that song, you're in a good place of, of, of who God is and right. your relationship with God. Right, you know? right. So there are songs that encourage you and glorify God, mm -hmm. but there are also songs that glorify Satan. That's true. That's true. And those songs carry a message that promotes sin. Yes. At the end of the day, enough, right. it promotes sin. It's, right. it's, it's um, premarital sex, you know, in the lyrics. It's, it's talking about drugs or violence or adultery, mm. yes. you know, and you just... I don't know why the song the song just popped in my bed in my um, head. Somebody what? sleeping in my bed. You know, <laughs> I know that's probably old and 41. But told your age or no. <laughs> you know, um different songs, you don't even realize this is adultery. You know, right. you're creeping in somebody else's window. Well, you know, there were songs like that in the old school. Right. And this is something that I, I'm more of an expert in. But when you're dealing with like um the song Congratulations, you know, I thought it would have been me for as long as I could breathe, you'll always be the one for me. She's singing congratulations to a man getting married, but it was all about her heart wanting to be with this man. Right. Or if you listen to um, one of them in particular, Saving All My Love For You with the Houston. It's right. a song that very everybody popular. was loving, very, very popular. Right. But if you hear the lyrics of the song, she's actually singing about an affair with a married man. She's mm -hmm. saying that, you know, a few subtle moments is all that we share, but you've got your family and they need you there. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. But tonight is my night. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like you're, you're actually promoting the idea of sleeping with somebody else's spouse, um, or she was rather. And when people hear that, sometimes these emotions right. stir up mm -hmm. and they're thinking, I'm saving all my love for you. But you don't realize the writer behind it, the mind behind it, the producers behind it had an Spirit agenda. And yes. And wanted to get something worked up in your flesh mm -hmm. to get you in trouble with God or to get your mind stirred up. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as she says, you're hearing somebody sleeping in my bed. What's going mm -hmm. on? 
Right. You know, right. that's it with my head. I remember that song <laughs> <laughs> and some other songs like that. And believe it or not, those songs have what they call a hook, which it does hook in you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hear it and you remember it. It'll play back. And some people act it out. But go right, ahead. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, you're good. Because um, it, it's just bringing home the point that there's music out there that glorifies Satan. And you're like, I don't I don't sing music that worship the devil. But the devil is... Um, promoting use, sin, and he, right. he, he, um, sorry, he pulls on your flesh. Yes, you know, and he'll use music as an instrument to do that. Right. And so we Again. have to be careful, and we have to be watchful and mindful because sometimes people say, "Oh, ain't nothing wrong. I'm saved, but I still listen to my, or I still listen to this." Right. Spirit. You need to um, awake and, mm -hmm. and realize that the enemy is subtle, and he will use anything. To try to pull you and lure you away from yes. God and from bringing glory to God. Amen. Amen. So, um, all right. So, we went over, you know, as far as um, why we listen to music and what was it used for. I'm going to give you a couple of biblical examples of what God's um, intention as far as praise. Um, if you go to Psalms 149 and 3, I'm going to go ahead and just go straight to the word. If you go to like Psalms 149 and 3, and then we're going to go to 150 and 4. But 149 and 3, he says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. So we know that the Lord was the one that said, hey, you know, let them praise you in the dance. Let them praise you with the timbrel and harp. Um, we recognize that God um, doesn't mind people praising him, you know, with instruments. Because right. you do have some movements that are saying, hey, no instruments. Uh, I know right off the bat, the Church of Christ is one. In worship service, you can't use any music, and that's not something that you can really put it's a verse biblical. to. It's not right. biblical. You can't make that a doctrine. You know, it may be an optional preference for their movement, but um, obviously that's not something that we would agree with. We've had videos on the Church of God. If you hear the music in the background, so you know when he says that, let them praise His name with mm -hmm. a, you know sing praises with the timbrel and the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, instrumentation was used. In other words. Psalms 150, verse 4. It was Psalms 150, verse 4. And, and we can actually go back to, to, to 2, really. It says, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. You know, praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So the psalmist wrote a lot about instrumentation and in worship. And when we start speaking about how to worship God, uh, we want to make sure we let the spirit of God and follow the protocols that God put according Amen. to his word. It's when man decides to do things opposite and, and, and glorify self and lift self up, you know, because you have some who do get on instruments and because they're in their flesh, it becomes a time of this is my solo. Mm -hmm. Now it's my time to shine. Give me my drum solo. Let me play my guitar the hardest and my piano and I'm going to play behind my back and everything. But this isn't about you. When this ain't praise him right, with right. the instrument, you're praising a holy God with right. the instrument. It's not about, I'm watching, I'm warm and working. They can see me now. It's not It's not your showtime. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's about Jesus, it's about God. And you should be helping people to go before God through humility and love and feeling the presence of God, the ushering of the spirit. Not so much as just gyrating and filling the flesh and getting into their own groove thing. Right. Because if you if you pretty much do the same thing you're doing at the club, you're doing at the church, then you, you're just really letting your flesh dictate and mandate what you're feeling at that moment mm -hmm. versus being led of the spirit and recognizing that this is an encounter with God. This is a moment with God where I want to lay prostrate before him. I want to humble myself and worship him in spirit and truth as yeah. God requires according to his word. Amen. Mm -hmm. As you said, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people like to worship in the flesh, mm -hmm. but the reality is, he says, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit yes. and in truth. And the word is the truth. That's right. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead with another verse, though. So we read about as far as um, singing unto the Lord. And I wanted to show you guys, we go to Second Chronicles 5 and 12. And sometimes you have to go to the old to kind of get a better clarity or understanding because the Old Testament was for example and admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It's um, Second Corinthians, I mean, Chronicles 5 and 12. Sorry. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, you can read it if you want. Second Chronicles All right, 5 and 12. Chronicles 5 and 12. Also, the Levites, which were the singers, all of them, Aspa and Heman and Jenathan, mm -hmm. 
which with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood right. at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. All right. So we want, we want to bring this out, that when God was setting things up for the temple and how he wanted to be worshipped in the Old Testament, because there are examples of admonition, we find that the Levites, the singers, mm -hmm. um, the sons of the brethren, these were the ones that were chosen to lead the worship. Right. And the, the relevance behind that we have to look at is the Levitical priesthood, you know, those Aaron and his sons, mm -hmm. they were the ministers. It was their job to minister to the temple. Out of the 12 tribes, we know that the Levitical priesthood couldn't own property. They were to dwell at the temple right, day and night right. and fulfill the duties within the temple, the physical temple, during the Old um, Testament. Mm -hmm. So what you find is the Levitical priesthood were the singers, the, mm -hmm. Levit the Levites were the ones that were the worship leaders because they had the connection as ministers of God. They knew the standard of God. I'm right. going to give you a verse to kind of help you with that. If you go to um, Leviticus, the 10th chapter, you're going to see the charge that God gave to the Levites. And then you're going to hopefully understand why you don't want just anybody to be a worship leader. You don't want just anybody to be up there making a bunch of noise singing, even right. if they do have a great voice. You want them to have the anointing of God and you want them to have the call of God on their life and to recognize that this, too, is a part of a ministry that you're adding to. You're not just doing you. Amen. You know, it's about leading the people before God in worship. Amen. And it's a high calling. And many worship leaders take it lightly sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, we're going to go to Leviticus 10. I'm going to read around verse um, eight. It says, and the Lord spake unto Aaron. And they're saying, and this is to Aaron and to the priest now. He said, do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when thou go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be for a statute forever throughout your generations. So God was showing a difference in the way the Levitical priesthood's mindset was right. versus the rest of Israel. He said, don't come to my congregation. Don't come to the temple drinking wine and all that stuff. If you do it, you're going to die. I need you to come in here right, Aaron. And I need your sons in the Levitical priesthood to have their mind right before they come in here. Now, these are the ones that was leading worship too now. And he says, that ye may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. Amen. So the Levitical priesthood, the Levites, Aaron and the, that tribe, they had a specific duty mm -hmm. to put difference between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean. God had gave him that charge as part of the priesthood. So when we look at it saying how the singers were the Levites of the mm -hmm. Levitical priesthood, it was their job to make a difference. They couldn't just go up in there worshiping the way they did with Baal right. or worshiping the way they did in Egypt. Right. You didn't copy what you saw the, the um, Canaanites and the other mm -hmm. nations do. Mm -hmm. They had a form of worship God had specifically for right. them. Right. And they had to perform that the way God required it, or they would have been in trouble with God. And I hope you all follow me because this applies to us even in the spiritual now. <laughs> Did you know God wanted a distinct difference between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean? And he told the, Levi the Levites um, to lead the charge. They were the worship leaders in their day. Mm -hmm. When you look um, at Leviticus 19 and 2, and Mika, if you can go to... Um, 1 Peter 15, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, so that way we could just read them back to back. Leviticus 19 and 2, it says, speaking unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, ye shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. So Amen. God told Israel and, and, you know, through the Levitical priesthood, the Levites, he said, hey, let them know you're going to be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. That was the requirement. He said, put a difference between that which was clean and unclean. And when you start talking about sanctification, something separate for God, they had things that were only for God in the temple. It cannot be used for other methods or reasons. When you look at the vessels that they had, that they might have drank and ate out of, these were holy vessels sanctified for the temple's use. When, when I think it was Nebuchadnezzar's son, mm -hmm. when he went and he tried to take them vessels right. and he had a party with his little friends, uh, it was Belteshazzar mm -hmm. and, and got to, uh, uh, was it Belteshazzar or, or um, I can't remember his name right now. Sorry, guys. But at any rate, I think it was. Mm -hmm. 
He was drinking and eating with the with the vessels that right. they took from the temple. Right. And, and God judged him right then and there. He had that hand without a body writing on the wall. That's where we get that saying, read the writing on the wall. God got on that young man. And those people were, were sorely troubled at the vision because he said, you've been weighed and found in the balance and found wanting. Right. You out of order because you took these vessels that was meant for God right. and use it for your own pleasure to have your own little house party with. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, sister. I'm going to read 1 Peter 1. I'm going to read 14 and 15. All right. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Amen. But as he which have called you is holy, yes. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Amen. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. We Amen. read that. Where the Lord said, ye shall be holy, because I'm holy. God That's wanted right. a distinct difference. He did. And if you look at Romans 12, 1 and 2, you see that it's one of um one of my favorite scriptures yeah. where he tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Amen. Our bodies are presented a sacrifice, holy, which is what he requires, because he said, Be holy if I am holy. And he said, That's your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. Mm -hmm. It says that be not conformed, don't go along with, don't act like, don't mimic. Be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. We're to change when we come through Christ Amen. and not be like the world. Amen. And if our body is the temple and we're recognizing we want the temple to be holy, the same way he had the Levitical priesthood put a distinction and showed them how they need to be holy yeah. and not take the things of the profane and try to drag that into his temple. We don't need to do that now. Yeah. We need to make a distinction and a difference between the two. Oh, and yeah. he made that very clear when he said that they had to make a difference from clean and unclean. And he told us here that we don't need to be conformed to the world, but be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our mind. When we look at 1 John 2 and 15, he tells us love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. If you hear the music, we're talking about the deception of music now, more than likely, everything you're going to hear on your local pop station or hip hop station or R&B top station is going to be the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, yes. and the pride of life. The very thing he told us not to get involved right. with is what they're promoting. They're, my Gucci so fly, I pop my collar, oh, look at my red bottom shoes. It's going to be the lust of the eye. You're going to see those things and desire those things because they're bragging and they're telling you, this is how you live life. This is how we get it. You know, and you're going to conduct yourself based off that message that you're receiving in your spirit. You're going to start to look down like, man, I got to get on my game. I got to get on my grind. I'm, I'm struggling, man. I got I to gotta, I gotta get on my square. Why you got to do all that? Because of what you're listening to in the ear and what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Is convincing you that you're somehow lacking. Right. There's the lust of the flesh. You know, they playing songs. I, she can't love you like I can love you, or he can't love you like I can love you. You should let me love you. Let me be the one for you. Baby, I'm here whenever you need me. Mm -hmm. These things pull on the flesh. And if you're a young person that you're not even ready to get married, you're right. not even at a point where you're in a, a mental capacity to be committed in a relationship, what are songs like that going to promote? Fornication. Right. You're going to be like, man, I do feel like doing so. I do feel like being with somebody. Right. Man, let me, let me look around. Or, girl, I like the way you walk, the way you shake, the way you do. That's the type of music that's going to get in your spirit. And it won't be long before it begins to feed on your mind and on your heart and your desires begin to change. So we got to be aware of what we're listening to, saints of God. We got to be very careful and cautious because um, a lot of these songs, the enemy is using to lure our young people away, and he lures some old people too. Yeah, he does yeah. old folks. He lure, lure people away, you know, <laughs> right? Because that's one of his main things that he, he's using. Yes. But I like the points that we're bringing out: the difference between holy and unholy. Amen. Um, and even the scripture in First Peter: not fashioning yourselves um, after your former lust or ignorance. Amen. And so, what what we have seen in the past like, 10, 15 years, yes. where the church has borrowed from the world samples right. and music right. from the world and say, we're going to do this. We're right. going to have this um, music, but we're going to write our own lyrics on top of it. Right. Instead of being original. And you're so. bringing that into the congregation. Amen. And, and so that's supposed to be worshiping God. 
Right. So we we talked about there are two parts to the song. There's a lyric and then there's the music. Yes. And as Brother Michael was pointing out, the the Levites and how important it was for them um, to follow the guidelines that that God had set up for them. Amen. At least they die. Yes. Uh, It's still important for our um, ministers of worship or ministers. Uh, music ministers right. to be under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you are leading worship, when yes. you are writing a song, when you are creating the music to go along the with the song, Amen. you want to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because yes. if you allow another spirit to influence you, mm. then you're going to get a different outcome in the uh, people that listen to the song. True. And then your lyrical content can also it's gonna be fall lost. short because it's gonna a be lot lost. of songs are theologically unsound. Right. Um, even even within the Christian church, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that write songs, beautiful songs. Songs sound great, four chords, melody, everything, right. the right. hook, the bridge, everything is perfect in the song from a worldly sense. But spiritually, when you listen to the lyrics, mm-hmm. their doctrines that they have adopted. Um, a lot of great worship songs uh, celebrate failure to the extent to where they don't want to try to even do any better. It's like, yo, we got to stay right in this place. Let me give you some examples. Um, one of the main things that I hear a lot, uh, this is both in uh, CCM or gospel. So depending on what version of Christian music you like, both of them, you find that a lot of them um, want to stay in a place of you don't want perfection. God, you don't want perfection. You don't want me to even try anymore. You know, I've heard song after yeah. song. And Perfection is my enemy. You're, 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 I'm not, Lord, we know you don't want me to be perfect. You never asked me to be perfect. But what did Jesus say in Matthew 5, 48? He said, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. When we go to, I think it's in um, Peter, where he speaks about um, as far as after you've suffered a while. Yes. Is it 2 Peter 5 and 10, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. He's after you've suffered a while. That he's going to make you establish you, strengthen, settle, and make you perfect. Mm-hmm. When we read in the Word, and he says that 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 um, he told Abraham, I preached this Sunday. He said, "Walk before me and be thou perfect." Mm-hmm. Um, when the Bible says that the gifts of the Holy Ghost of the Spirit are for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying mm-hmm. of the body, right. how can you perfect the saint to edify the body if this is not something he requires? Right. And when we speak of perfection, we're not saying that the person will not. Um, mess up. They won't be late for an appointment. They may even fall. That's not the perfection we're speaking of. The perfection is loving God with a perfect heart. But if you're not even trying to get to that place because he ain't really looking for perfection. It's so many songs that um, celebrate um, a mediocrity in Christianity. Right. But then when it comes to education, we want a 4.0. We want a perfect GPA. When we play basketball, we have a perfect game. You might have missed some shots, but you made 32 points. You, you had a triple-double, and you feel like, you know, you you, you kind of did your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to really be careful because a lot of these songs, uh, I remember years ago, it was one that's very popular. I'm going to have to bring this one out of the, wipe the dust off of this song. They would sing like, we fall down and we get up. We fall down and we get up. Because the saying is just a sinner who fell down and then got up. Okay. But when you read in Jude, when you read in the scripture. Jude tells you in Jude, there's only one chapter, verse 24. It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So if he's able to keep you from falling, why are we singing we fall down like we got to fall when he's able to keep you from falling? You know, and there was a scripture. Uh, I forgot if it was uh, Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers, but it was that now unto him, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. We're singing, he can keep you from falling. But then a song later, we're singing, we fall down, we got to get up. You know, so we don't have to fall. The Bible says, um, sin shall not have dominion over you. He says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How should we get a dead to sin live any longer therein? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these songs celebrate a mediocrity because they're theologically unsound, but they have a beautiful tone. It sounds really nice, Mm -hmm. but what are they saying? And what does that do for the Christian spiritually inwardly? When you receive that message and you start to think like, well, yeah, it's no point me even trying. Because, you know, because that song replays in your mind, I love the the hymns, the old school songs, because a lot of them hymns, like they hit the nail on the head, right. and they ain't cut no corners. You know, there was one called um, "Sin Shall Never Enter There." I remember my first time reading the lyrics to that hymn. I was like, "Whoa, that's mm-hmm. serious." You know, when you hear "I cannot be idle," but Jesus said, "Go and work mm-hmm. in my harvest today." Right. When you hear that, um, "Be an overcomer," only cowards yield. 
When the foes they meet on the battlefield, we are blood-bought princes of a royal host and must falter not nor desert our post. And in the chorus is saying, never yield a step in the hottest fight. God will send you help from the realms of light. In Jehovah's bite, put the foe to flight, and the victor's crown you shall wear at last. Be it over. There are so many songs. There are now don't get me wrong, there are some good songwriters out there. I love Clear the Stage by Jimmy Needham. When he did it, I don't think he's the original author, but he redid it. When he talks about clear the stage and, and, and you know, we can sing all we want to and still get it wrong because worship is more than a song. I love that line that he puts in there. And he's saying anything that I love with all my heart before my God is an idol. Anything I put before my God is an idol. Mm -hmm. When he starts breaking down the bridge, that's a beautiful song. And um, those type of songs are the type that help us to overcome. Mm -hmm. They give us the inner strength that we need. Right. Uh, I remember when I was in trouble, because um, when I came to Christ, I'll tell you, I was in jail at the time I got saved. I didn't get saved in church. I was in jail. And Brother Micah had um, cried out to the Lord. I repented. The Lord had forgave me because he spoke to me while I was there. And upon him saving me, I can remember fragments of the old songs, of the old hymns, right. you know. And those songs spoke volumes. They really blessed me and helped me. Um, as I continue to go, I see there's a question too. We we're going to answer that question also. Um, as far as who do you think are good Christian artists, we can cover that also. And you're right, brother Gary. They are clubbing in some of the churches. Unfortunately, the church, uh, and we read about being not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. James four and four says friendship with the world. Excuse me, it's enmity with God. Therefore, if you're a friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. And then you also have um, John fifteen. And 19, where Jesus said that you're not of the world. He said, if you right. were of the world, the world would understand you. Mm -hmm. But because you're not of the world, the world's going to hate you. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, John, uh, James, they're all saying the same thing. There's going to be a separation from us in the world. Right. There's going to be a difference from how we do things versus the world. And if you look at the history, even in music, originally the sounds that were coming out from the church the secular started to try to rob and steal. You know, you got like Ray Charles stealing Christian songs and all that, trying to remake them. The Christian, the Christians were the originators right. that was creating the songs that made the world want to follow. But what happened is somewhere we switched places, right. and now the world said, "Okay, we got this now." Because even if you look at the old town, the, the tambourine, the little shaking, all of those sounds, the harmonies they were bringing, they stole them from the church. Right. A lot of them singers, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, Whitney Houston, all the Whitney Houston. Uh, who else? We got a whole gang of them we could go through. Um, they were from the church and they, they 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 jumped over. And when the world got them, then all of a sudden the church started feeling like, well, we need to copy them then. Right. We don't have our own voice. So let's just do what they do. And maybe that'll help. But we are supposed to be the originators. We have mm -hmm. the great God of heaven to inspire us, to give us a new song. Sing it to the Lord a new song. Amen. He can give you a new song, a new sound. And I thank God for um, those who are fighting. Um, to keep their integrity in an industry that pulls away. Because another thing is the enemy uses a lot of those people to try to get you to compromise your faith and your values. You know, you'll go to some of the Christian awards and they're trying to get you to do drugs on the side or they're trying to get you to involve in like homosexuality and other things on the side. I've seen some of these things transpire when I went like to like stellar awards. And now I didn't see this at the Dove Awards, but there are some things going on even at the Doves that kind of make you scratch your head and wonder what's going on. So there's all kind of um, underlying things the enemy is trying to do. And when you look at how um, the Christian artists will try to team up with the secular artists, just to get a little notoriety and fame in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw it with Tasha Cobbs and, and Nicki Minaj. And everybody right. was like, well, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Because maybe she's witnessing to the sister. Right. You didn't win her. She's still out there doing what she's been right. doing. She's still half right. naked on stage. Right. You didn't win her. You know, so a lot of times people make these compromises. Mm -hmm. And he said friendship with the world is enemy with God. Right. You know, they, they jump in, become bedfellows with the world. When we really should be lovingly be rebuking, being the light, and correcting mm -hmm. the world. Right. You know, he said to be not partakers of other men's sins. We should be, he said, we should reprove them according to scripture. He said, reprove them. We should be correcting the darkness. Yeah. And because light can't mix with dark. Amen. That, that is what the um, mainstream church is doing. They're, they're taking from the world and they're bringing it into the church. My Lord. And bless the heart of the um, elders. Some of them don't have no, what's going on. They don't. You know, they, <laughs> they be rocking to a like, song. Okay, well, praise the Lord. I remember this man came to our church. And he was trying to um, 
he he was not a speaker there, but he we have we still have testimony services at our church Amen. where you, you get can up, get up and testify, tell your testimony what God has done for you. So I praise God for that. So this man got up and he wanted to encourage the young people, and he was like, "Everybody, repeat after me." You know, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. He was <laughs> like, what? Yeah. You know, he thought it was cool because he changed the lyrics, but right. that song is promoting violence. That's not about killing folks. Killing That's DMX. I know but that song. I'm like, I want to be cool. I want to win the young people, so I'm gonna get this and bring it over into the church. Light and dark cannot mix. Right. You know, and so Amen. we gotta make sure that we don't borrow from the world. We don't need to borrow from the world. No, we need to be original. Amen. That's right. We are the light to the world. Amen. And so we have to um, make sure that we're putting a difference and that we're not afraid to say, you know what, we're not going to play that here. Because some some Christian songs, you might have listened to them. Right. But it puts you in a different mood. You're yeah, like, this, spirit. Yeah. This song making me want to, I don't feel right listening to this. <laughs> we're going to do something. I know it's talking about Jesus, but. I'm, I'm not feeling right. Something is not. I feel like I need right. to have somebody with me. Yeah. And you don't even understand why. And it's because a lot of our Christian artists, and maybe they, maybe it's their record label. Yeah. They got somebody Christian to write the lyrics, but then they got somebody secular to produce the music. Yes. And you're mixing light with dark, and you're putting it out you by spirit with Jesus on it, mm -hmm. and the spirit that was influencing whoever put that music. That's what's carrying on across that. Um, the frequency, sound wave, the sound the frequency, waves, yeah. and you hearing it confused, like, I know it's talking about Jesus, but I just don't feel right about this song. Right. And this is why. Right. They did do that. Now, right. So we have to be careful and we have to be watchful unto prayer and not allow um, these type of things to influence our mind and think that it's okay. Right. Because of the person who did it. Um, I know one who opened the gate wide open was Kirk Franklin, oh, yeah. you know, who, who got a lot of secular songs and brought them over into the church. And then you got people like Kanye West going to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, the song he got from um, Genuine. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure did. So anxious. That's he talking about, about Jesus. He's yeah. so anxious to have sex. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> lyrics about Jesus on it. We can't mix like Yeah, that. guys, we got to be very careful. I'm going to tell you why. 1 Corinthians 1 and 29 said that no flesh should glory in Amen. his presence. Um, God desires that no flesh should glory in his presence. Mm -hmm. It's not about us and what we prefer, what we like. It's about worshiping him. And we right. shared earlier where he said God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit right. and in truth. The way you worship God in spirit is being led by the Holy Spirit. And you got to imagine, like, can you really see Jesus or the Holy Spirit like, I'm so anxious. <laughs> Call me at 1130. That's just not going to happen. Right. You know what I mean? Like, when you, right. when you begin to really examine these things from a mature mind, I know there's some young Christians that may watch this and get offended and feel like, well, what are you trying to say? I'm like, as you grow by and by, you begin to put the flesh to death. You're going to realize that the carnal method of worship um, can only take you but so far. When you're ready to be at that last nerve, when that manager has gotten on that last nerve and you're right. ready to fight, you're not going to be sitting around singing no, um, you down with G-O-D? Yeah, you know me. Right. You down with G-O-D? Stop. You ain't going to be doing them songs. You're going to want something that's going to give you an anchor. You're right. going to want something that's going to give you a peace. Right. Um, when somebody very close dies, you know, you're not going to want to hear them songs that got you ready to go out there and lean with it, rock with it for Jesus Christ. You're going to want to sing the kind of songs um, yes. that grandma and them used to sing right. that when they used to play Mahalia Jackson and soon we'll be done with the troubles of this world because you're, you're in a place of sorrow and you need God to lift that burden. And, and when you're worshiping him, you want to make sure that it's not about you, that it's not about, you know, even, even people who put on a show for everybody around, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, no, it's all about him. And we got to make sure we keep it that way right. because the devil is very cunning and he's trying to slip these things in to the church. Right. And I just want to read because we, we are talking about the hymn. So I want to read Ephesians 5 and 19 said, well, 18 says, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Amen. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Yes. And singing and making melody in your heart. To Amen. the Lord. Amen. So the scripture exhorts us to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Yes. And so that's well, the spiritual songs. I guess those will be some of the songs that we listen to on the radio. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to have the Holy Spirit of God to know what is a spiritual song. Yes. You know, and the song is going to lead you to worship God. Yes. It's going to lead will. you to worship Him. It will. And I want to bring this out too, guys. If you look at Daniel, the second chapter. 
I'm not going to read it, but when you look at Daniel's second chapter, there was a situation where King Nebuchadnezzar um, has set up an image and he wanted everybody to bow down when the image, when the music came on. He wanted everybody to fall down and worship uh, when the music came. We said, what? You said everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> but anyway, I was going to try to find the verse because I didn't have it all totally in my notes. Oh. But basically, he was letting them know that when, yeah, here it is. When the music came on, all of them were supposed to bow down. Right. And um, we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't bow down. Right. That was the third chapter. I'm sorry, dang, the third chapter. But Nebuchadnezzar has set up this image of gold. And he said in verse five that the time you hear the sound of the coronet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the salt tree, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So I wanted to show you that he used that method of music to set up a form of worship where everyone will bow down. Mm -hmm. He didn't say when I say one, two, three, everybody bow to my golden right. image. Or when I come out, bow. He said when you hear the music, and when you hear the music, I want all of you to bow down in one accord. And what you find is the enemy is still doing that now. That's when right. people get into them ciphers and them sessions, you see the MCs, they all send a bob in their head. Mm -hmm. And when they say, get your hand up, everybody's hands just going up. And when uh, Jay-Z say, throw your diamond up, they all throw the Rockefeller sign up because these people have been tied into things that the enemy has been bringing and using through music as the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you another scripture on that. If you look at 1 Samuel 16, 23, when King Saul, Lost his anointing with God. Right. I'm just going to tell it because we, we turn to it, read to it. We'll be here all night. We got a few more verses. But when, so I'm going to go ahead and read that one. We need to read that one so people can see it. Right. Um, it's 1 Samuel 16. What happened was Saul was rejected as king. And upon him being rejected, God allowed a wicked spirit to trouble him because the spirit of God had left him. So I'm going to read it in 16 verse 14. It said, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on the harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hands, and thou shalt be well. Mm. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. So he said, wait a minute. Okay, I need you to provide me a man that can play well and bring them to me. Now go to verse 23. It says, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So what you have to recognize, music can draw spirits right. and it can drive spirits. Mm -hmm. Music can draw them and it can drive them. Mm -hmm. When you have a group of young people Willing to start throwing bowls and fighting total strangers and tearing the club up because three six mafia said tear the club up blah 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 tear the club up and they start throwing chairs and fighting or they say east side west side what zone you from and they fighting there is something over the atmosphere them spirits are coming through and it is messing with these people right. and it's causing them girls to dance like they never danced before they're like Cleopatra and I guess y'all got Rihanna and all of them in one they doing all kind of craziness. Because the spirits that are coming through the songs, the music, the same right. way the right. demons were driven away from Saul when, when David would play the harp. Because when a man of God is actually doing it on the scene, you can drive the spirits away. You sing the right worship song, play the right music, you get a peace in the atmosphere. People that might be in the center of your house, they call down, they call their spirits, they're ready to leave. Mm -hmm. But when you have that unrest, that noise, that demonic pulling and, and bringing yeah. in them spirits, yeah. You're going to be troubled many right. a days. Right. And many people wonder why they can't get over their ex. Wonder why they can't get past their feelings. Why am I still dreaming and having sexual thoughts about this mm -hmm. person? You've allowed that song and that music to replay. And when you're hearing it, the familiar spirits are working on you. Mm -hmm. You need to replace that with songs of hope, songs of Zion. Amen. And you need to pray and repent as God to take it away from you so yeah. that you have power over Amen. Some people get rage, anger, yeah. because they're listening to a song. They get you ready to fight, ready to cut up and do some things. Mm -hmm. I want to read this, um, uh, just a little segment from the article I found um, from CNN. It says, research suggests music can influence us a lot. Yes. It can impact illness, depression, spending, productivity, and our perception of the world. Mm. Some research has suggested that it can increase aggressive thoughts or encourage crime. Wow. And so this is just uh, going along with what we're showing you. 
they don't understand the, the, the spiritual application behind the music. Because mm. see, we are we are um, humans having we are, we are spiritual, spiritual beings, beings having a human experience having a human experience. This body of flesh and created um, to worship, right? And we were made to worship God, and this music is going to lead us to worship either God or worship the enemy. That's right. It's plain as day. That's right. And I want to give another example. Um, I have printed out um, an article. Uh, many of you may not know this, but even our government, the CIA, actually used music to torture people. Right. Um, when they were in Guantanamo Bay and during the time of 9-11, um, the Senate Intelligence Committee released a report on the CIA's torture in the post-9-11 period. And it said it revealed that the CIA deliberately misled the public, the White House and Congress, about the efficacy of torture. Uh, which is more clear the method that they used. And they talk about the different methods that they use, but they found that music um, was one of the ones. Some musicians actually sued the federal government because they found out that they were using their music. And I remember when they had the music playing constantly, they were saying some of the um, inmates would bash their head against the wall. Some of them would start going crazy because they would put the song on repeat and just let it keep playing. And it would psychologically affect them. Because when you when you have that kind of a sound constantly going and it's constantly playing, it does affect you. Even sometimes before they get ready to drop the bombs and go to war, there are certain songs that they'll play to get the people hyped up and ready to go to the battle. Mm -hmm. So you really need to be careful about what you're putting in your spirit and what you're mm -hmm. taking in because it can affect you. It does affect you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It will have an impact on your life. Um, music promotes moods. And mm -hmm. um, it can create an atmosphere of peace and it can create an atmosphere of depression. You yes. Know? And you have to be careful. You may be feeling sad and, and maybe maybe someone passed or just just a down period in your life. And mm -hmm. then you're like, I want to listen to some music. And then the, 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 the song slow, just gets you right there. Music and that spirit of depression is just helping you. Down, down, What's that down. girl name? Oh, it's a new girl that, that one of my friends told me about to listen to. I mean, he's not saying, well, anyway, this girl, Billy English, or something like that. Mm -hmm. She's like into depressing songs and depressed and, and down on herself. Very and dark, dark music, very yeah. dark. And see, we got to be careful because this stuff is seeping into the congregation. Yes. Um, A lot of times we're not going to get into that tonight, but it's because they're letting witches come into the congregation That's true. under the name of, of prophets or prophetess. Mm -hmm. And um, these things are getting into our our, our congregations. Right. People don't realize and understand what's going on. And you try to listen to a music or I, I like this artist. I'm drawn to this artist. But this artist ain't been saved that long. Yeah. They just and uh, some of these artists are coming straight from the world right into the um, congregation or right yes. into the um, what do you call it? Like the the, what, the choir. The light of, wow. Of, of gospel music, like there's oh, yeah. a limelight, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, I was like, I do a gospel song, then hop right back over. But call I'm not, talking, I'm oh, not, not the worldly people. Oh, okay, I'm okay. talking about people that like just got saved. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. You they know, just changed. and they yeah. just changed. And the first and then, thing they do is give them a pulpit, exactly. put them in the front. Now that happened a lot. I think yeah. Mace went through that. Smokey Robinson went through that. And, and they, they haven't pastors, sat at the feet preaching. of Jesus. They <laughs> haven't learned how to overcome. They still the battling. You have. Groupies, you yeah. have money. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there because he told himself, You got a man writing songs who battling pornography, yeah, you know, that's true, making music, battling pornography. Yes, you got people battling depression, writing songs for Jesus. Yes, that's the spirit, some of the spirits they under and in writing songs. And that's why they won't sing songs about victory, right? Uh, overcoming sin. No, you're not gonna make a song about that if you're gonna mm -hmm. stay in it. And so, we had we got to. Be careful. We have Amen. to stay in tune with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And does it line up with the word? Is this song biblically sound? Right. You right. Know, can I listen to this song and glorify God? Amen. Or is it going to lead me to a place of mediocrity or I really don't have to be saved or I, I, oh, I can still sin? Or oh, just made me want to shake and jive. Right. Right. We're at Christian concerts where yes. people are supposed to be singing songs to uplift Jesus and the people in the crowd they dancing. Get their dance all. Yeah, like they've been I mean, <laughs> like we're back dancing. in the old club it's days. Like, cutting the music. Something is not right here. Yes, yes. We have to be very careful. Very, Everybody very is. careful. Because the music is creating moods and people at least some songs can lead people to depression, lead people to suicide. Right. You know, lead them away from God. And I want to bring this out because we just said that this mm -hmm. ties in with that. It's Amos, the fifth chapter, verse 20. Amos 5 and 20. He says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, 
even very dark, no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feast days. Mm -hmm. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Mm -hmm. God is saying, I'm not with this. He says, though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings from your fat beast. Right. Take away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. He's like, I don't even want to hear your songs. Take right. that music away. Take your song away. Take your sacrifice away because you're not doing it the way I require you to do it. Amen. He said, but let judgment run down as waters yes. and righteousness as a mighty stream. He said, you know, I want judgment. I want righteousness. I want y'all to be on point. You know, right. the Bible lets you know that, you know, ju don't judge according to appearance, but judge ye righteous judgment. Amen. The saints should judge the world. And if you're going to judge the world, you're not able to judge the smallest of matters according to the word of God. So he's saying, look, I don't want y'all bringing me a bunch of noise just to be making noise. You can say you worship me. Oh, we had church. We got our groove on today. He's not having it. And I'm going to give you another verse. It's Proverbs 21, 27. Proverbs 21, 27. Um, confirms that we just read where he said, take away the noise of your vows. God don't accept every type of phrase we use throwing at him. 21 and 27, he says, the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with the wicked mind? Um, God said that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he has a wicked mind? Right. God don't want that. It's an abomination. When you have, and I've seen the article. Where, because now they know to do the losing R. Kelly, and everybody know about how to mess with the little girls. But when R. Kelly was doing both gospel and R, because he he writing and producing for uh, the boy from America, I had a Ruben Stutter, and he's sitting there doing bump and grind and doing songs with uh, the Ozzy Brothers. At that period, he was doing both. Heaven, I need a hug, and the next minute, girl, what I'm doing, I see you. And he said in the article, "Ain't nobody able to mix salvation and bump and grind like I can." See? The man was singing in the middle of a concert. Back then now, Arkin was in the concert. Drop to his boxers and try to have an altar call in the middle of the concert. So we see the confusion that the enemy is able to bring through the deception of music. You have to really be careful because you'll watch those people. You'll fall in love with those people. You'll accept them in your bosom. You'll be idolizing people and not realizing it. And you start right, following right, them right. people and their example. You still got people running around saying they love Jesus and they love them to be high as well. And they're ready to go at you. Don't you say that about Jehovah, who we know is trying to take the name Jehovah. You can't say that about Jay-Z or Beyonce. They're ready to come cancel you and all that because the heart of those people mm -hmm. are caught up in them and not in the man who created them. Not in the one who created them, rather. They are not really worshiping the father. Right, they're worshiping right. the creature and not the creator. Not the Lord, help them now. And right. you have to die to these things. You have to recognize right. God said, take your music and the sacrifice of the wicked right. is an abomination. Right. He don't want to hear you telling women to bow down to you in one song. And then you turn around talking about you love Jesus. And when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. He wouldn't want to say yes to all that you're doing. It was the industry. Sony Records in Columbia said yes to all you were doing. They gave you that green light. Right. That wasn't Jesus. That's all right. right. So I want to give you another verse. It's Hebrews 13 and 15. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13 and 15. He tells us there, he says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Amen. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. We're supposed to give the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That's right. And it's the fruit of our lips, giving praise to his name. <laughs> so we're in the scripture. Where we say songs, spiritual songs, making melodies in your heart. Mm -hmm. We're in the scripture. where We say the songs need to be about God, about Jesus. We need to be praising and singing songs to help him. And you have to recognize the same way that the CIA was able to use music to torture and it affected people physically. Yes, it affects you physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally mm -hmm. when you play these songs. That's these right. things take a toll on your soul. Mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but Amen. against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against yes. spiritual wickedness in high places. My Lord. And so we're, it's not against the people, it's the spirit. It's working within. It's working within these people. And let me tell you something else. Um, parents, I'm warning you, be careful of the music that's playing behind your children's video games. Yes. Because some of the um, games, and I, don't, I don't let my children play games that are violent, that's killing people. Um, right. But if you listen to some of the music, it is violent music oh, in the sexual. background. It, yeah. Right. It doesn't have any lyrics to it. But if you look up the writer, 
um, uh, the creator of the music, you realize, oh, this is not something I want them to listen to. Oh, some of them have the songs. Like when you play like the in the NBA game stuff, they have it blasting. You hear everything. Not not right. kids, so but it's, I've it's heard both. Kids. It's, yeah, they do can, both. You can do the music or but with without. the song. So you need to be careful. And maybe it's like an NBA game. Maybe it's innocent. So just mute, mute it. You know. Mm -hmm. But if you start notice a difference in your child. That's right. You don't know where it's coming from. Now, why he's so angry after he gets to play his game? Or what's what is going on? Yeah. Um, you might want to check that. You know, yes. because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. This is spiritual. That's right. And the enemy is going to come in through whatever avenue he can get to mm -hmm. to pull your heart, your mind away from God. Yes. And so we are um, a peculiar people, saints. We are Amen. sanctified, meaning that we are set apart. We're supposed to be different from this world. Yes. Yes, there are some songs you need to cut off. Amen. There are a lot of artists. When you come to Christ, you need to just get, throw it away mm -hmm. and let it go. Yes. Because you're saying, Lord, I want to follow Christ and I want to follow him all the way. Yes. So we got to let these things go. Uh, Sister Shayla asked a question. Uh, what's, what, who's a good artist what's to listen good to? <laughs> That's a tough question. You know, yeah, because there are some good songs out there. Right. The artist may be the one that actually sings it, but may not be necessarily the one that wrote it. Yes, and that's true. while we might give you a name, you know, they be prayerful. They could fall tomorrow. Yes. I'm gonna say they could, they could be fall. popping pills and getting on the stage talking about, I love Jesus. They're we don't anything. know. Yeah, that's true. You know? so let be led of the spirit. That's um, right. There are several. I can name a few songs um, and as well as, I guess, maybe some artists. Um, but again, um, you want to make sure that they're not conforming to this world. And when you start to see signs, because that's a, that's a yeah, temptation yeah. in music, too, guys. When you come out gospel, you have a lot of them that sing gospel and they are like on fire for Jesus. And, and by and by, you're in these circles. And because the, the labels are so close, you're meeting people who may have sold two million records and they just got this big Grammy and they did this big film. And now here you come and they're like, you in. Hired me as a Christian artist, and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to be funny acting. So I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> and they begin to compromise. And before long, you're in the circle with them, and they're like, oh, we know we're doing a line of coke. You want to come through? Well, no, I don't, I, I don't care. I don't do coke. I just drink something because you want to fit in, but you're not trying to really stand out because you don't want to be that Christian mm -hmm. to them. And when you're in that position, you, you begin to compromise oh, in your heart. Right. And Christ said, if we're ashamed of him on earth, he'll be ashamed of us when he comes with the joy of his angels. So we can't afford the luxury of playing like that so a lot of the the christian artists they'll start out on fire yeah. and what'll happen is they'll do an interview i saw it happen um uh, one of them that i like um of course in the beginning of course was lauren daigle her first album but i remember when they put her on the spot and said is homosexuality a sin and it's like oh, you know i'm still studying that let me know if you know the answer i remember um not just her it's a couple of them they do like that they, they'll put them like right there on front street mm -hmm. and ask them a question in front of the world and at that point, they choke. I saw it happen for so, those who follow um, the Lecrae crowd and the 116 crowd. I remember when Andy Menio was on, I think, Good Morning America, or Good Day America, whatever channel. And they said, hey, well, we notice you guys have 116 on your hat from Romans 116. We see I got it on your sleeve and tattoo. What is 116? And he's like, oh, you know, we're going to talk about that later. We can talk about that backstage. Romans 116 said, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> the gospel of Christ, but yet you're ashamed on Good Morning America because you don't want the world to know that you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Or they play this Jedi mind trick of, I'm not a Christian artist, but I'm an artist who happens to be Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, they play that game because they don't want to be labeled a Christian, Lord forbid, but that's what you're supposed to do. Instead of any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Right. If they turn your music off because you rep Christ, that's what they're supposed to do. Jesus said, the marvel not if the world hates you. They hated me first. If they hate me, they're going to hate you too. If they keep my saying, they'll keep your saying. We know this is what he expressed for us. So again, um, some artists um, I like. Um, I, I, I like, now me, because of, of me playing guitar as well, I like um, from traditional gospel to CCM. Um, there are some songs, I'm not going to vouch for every song this artist puts out, but I like a lot of Carrie Job stuff that puts you in like the mode of worship, um, as far as like hear and healer and, um, you know, let the heavens open. Um, I like, um, I mentioned, of course, like I said, some of, um, Lauren Daigle stuff, um, from the first album more. So the second album's all right. The first album's better. I like 10th Avenue North, uh, from a guitar perspective, as far as their lyrical content. 
Now, when you now, Phil Hills, Wickham. yeah, Phil Wickham is one of my favorites. <laughs> Phil Wickham is like one of my favorites there. I like Phil, but sometimes Phil do some songs that I'm like, what is this? But for the most part, I like Phil, and if Phil's watching. <laughs> uh, play song with me one day, bro. But no, um, other than that, um, there are some traditional gospel. I actually like quartet music sometimes. You know, I recommend Jesus, or I play um, Automobile. Um, what's his name? Lee Williams, and spiritual. You know, um, I like. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. All about what you like. Yeah, you're one of the other ones I like. I like Mahalia Jackson. I, I actually play a lot of Mahalia Jackson sometimes. Uh, old Bo right. Williams and some old BB and CC Wines. Yeah. But songs that may be good for you guys um, that are watching, that are new. I think you, you, you know, covered a few. Number of artists. Some Elevation Worship. Some, yeah, they have some good and, and we say some because, you know, sometimes you get out there. You know, you, you feel like you're again, try to swear by the Spirit. You Amen. Know, they build God um, and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. you know, those are just some some artists that we listen to. Um, Brother Ed, uh, looking at your comment, and he says not to be a conspiracy theorist. And right. I would have blown off the idea a few years ago. But I wonder sometimes if some of the artists made a pact for their fame. I mean, some of those lyrics. Who are they praising? Who are they praising? You're right. <clears throat> You're right, brother. I, I really do um, lean on the side of um, not necessarily conspiracy theorists, but just to know um, the devil, when he went to Jesus in Matthew, he said, all this has been given to me. Bow down and worship me. me and I give, it I give you the glory of all these kingdoms. Yes, you earn the money there. When we were in the industry and I was trying to be an artist, the Lord showed me that. And he mm -hmm. showed me once I had surrendered my will uh, to God's will, submitted right. to that. He opened my eyes to see that these people a lot. Now I'm not saying all. Some of them don't even realize what's going on. Right. But a lot of these Christian artists are too being worshipped by men. That's true. And they have put themselves up as a God. And, and pedestals, people yeah. don't even see Jesus. They, they're fainting over them and trying to touch them the same way they do the people in the Secular right. um, scene, so yes. it's sad to say, but some of them have made a pact, whether they realize it or not, right? For the fame, because they're trembling when they meet them and they're shaking, and, yeah. and that's why their their music and their lyrics don't promote um, true salvation, right? True deliverance, you water down. It's watered down, and very very surface, very flesh, <laughs> very fleshy. Here. You know, type of worldly, so Sensual yeah. Sensual music yeah. more so. But no, you're right. There are those who did make a deal. I know, um, for those who know music history, you had, um, uh, what was his name? Robert Johnson, The Crossroads, um, the guitarist who said he made a deal with the devil. So, so right, that was kind of right. like one of the biggest ones to proclaim that. He made songs about it, actually. And it's documented on his official webpage. Even though after he died, they tried to change the story up. But at any rate, he was the one that spoke of selling his soul. Um, I did a video um, on this channel, actually, about um, can a person sell their soul? And I was bringing out different artists that actually said it in interviews that they've sold their right, souls. Right. Um, those that have said they've made a pact with the devil. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yes, as Sister Mika said, there are a lot of Christian artists who, um, whether inadvertently or intentionally, make that same pact for fame. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the industry has a saying, you're only good as your last hit. If you don't have a hit record, they don't care nothing about you. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if you secular or gospel. If you ain't got a hit, you're nobody. So these people have to make a hit. And sometimes they have to compromise. You might mm -hmm. have to sleep with a person or get involved with people you normally wouldn't be involved with just for them to do music with you or to write with you. And when you've mm -hmm. compromised yourself like that, you're indeed making a deal with the devil. You you're making a covenant. It's so <laughs> much bigger than what we know for that song to hit the radio, and I'm not saying every artist, right. but just like in the secular um, realm, these artists are signed to labels, and some mm -hmm. of these labels are, they, they do multiple genres of music. They do. Some of them admit to having um, people come in and, and pray or do a seance over their record, right? you know, so that it will sell good, you know? Yes. So, that's true. This is the record label that the artist is signed to that's supposed to be promoting Christ, but right. you're linked to this thing that's actually worshiping Satan. So that's, that's why, why we got to be careful. Yeah, and that's why they're scared to call certain things out. Right, Because right. the record label will, won't allow it. Yeah, it'll shut them down. The record label be like, yo, you can't say that. Yeah, I remember um, we did a song, and um, we got a review on one of the songs that I was singing. And the guy was like, you know, it's, a, it's okay. This one might make it. Because they didn't want to hear the name Jesus. 
mm-hmm. or hearing something about salvation, you know, and salvation was based upon condition. I remember. Yeah. I remember it was a lyric that we had that said, um, um, he said, I am your savior if you confess. Right. And uh, the person in the industry had told us that, uh, well, when you say Jesus is your savior, if you confess, you put a stipulation and that doesn't go well over with the listeners. And they wanted, they didn't like that line right. of the song. But the thing is, is Jesus, to, to, you had to confess him as Lord and Savior. Right. <laughs> you confess him, I believe in your heart. That's how you get saved. But in their mind, that lyric um, bar, you know, was distracting. And there are those that don't want you to say the name Jesus. You know, there are labels that are to tell you because you make it less churchy. Could you, you know, say um, a higher power or, you know, I got an angel on my shoulder. Just say anything other than <laughs> the God of heaven, Yahweh, Jesus, the Lord. Then they're like, nah, you can't say that kind of stuff. And uh, certain shows, I mean, they'll edit stuff out. I remember, um, I think it was American Idol, which I Idol of all things, but American Idol, uh, I remember it was in the news, in the Christian news. They played a Christian song. I forgot what song it was, but it was a Christian song they played on American Idol. But they took out the part, I think, said God. Mm-hmm. They didn't want the part to say, you know, God in it. But they wanted the rest of the song. And it's just like, how do you do that? You know, right. and then later I think somebody said they tried to go back and correct it because they claimed it was a technological error once everybody started blowing a whistle on them. So at any rate, you you have that situation going on, guys. And you have to really be careful. Amen. Um, as the sister said. Amen. All right. Amen. But we appreciate you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, sorry we had to um switch it up on Tuesday instead of Monday. But praise God for those who did tune in. And we pray that um, the word was a blessing tonight and that we'll continue to keep each other lifted in prayer. Please be safe out there uh, right now. We know a lot of um, economies are opening back up and I've been having to work throughout this whole ordeal. You know, wash your hands, be safe, use wisdom. Excuse me, as the Lord leads, you know, don't put yourself in jeopardy. And we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we pray you guys are blessed until we get to come back. Again. Yes, thank you all for your comments. And um, yes. thank you for tuning in. Um, and so, and and welcome to our newcomers. Um, yes, all those who came for the first time, we appreciate you. We appreciate all your comments and even your suggestions for topics. Um, yes. and, and yeah, we do see your topic. Um, so many gospel artists struggle with homosexuality. Yes, this is true. This yes, is true. We didn't bring true. that out in this lesson, but maybe that's something that we could talk about. Um, yeah. Um, the church being silent about homosexuality and how it is yeah. seeping through our congregations and what, what should we do and say about it as, right. as the people of God. Right. Um, so, but yeah. thank you all for your comments and we hope you, you know, like Michael said, stay safe and stay <laughs> prayed up. Stay yes. strong, be the light. And if you struggle with letting things go, fast. Yes. Fast. That's you know, have a Amen. determined heart like, God, if this is what you want from me, Help me to if, if this is going to help me bring you glory for my life, Amen. then um, remove this thing far from me and, yes. and help me to measure to it. And he will. He will. Yes, he will. Amen. Right. Be encouraged, saints. We love you. And thank All you right. for tuning in. Yes. Good night, you guys. All right. Q&A this week. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll probably do a Q&A Friday. Lord willing, we'll do a Q&A Friday, guys. Um, Friday night. Uh, I usually start that a little earlier, about 7.30, I think. 7, 7.30-ish. We'll try around there. Mm-hmm. So make sure y'all tune in Friday for the Q&A. Yeah, and we're thinking about doing a Zoom with some of you guys. Uh, yes. So like, that you can actually talk and interact with us instead of us reading your comments. Yes. Um, so, so hopefully you're willing to Pray for us. We can get that going soon. Yes. Yeah, so we can do the Zoom and everybody can kind of tune in. But thank you guys again. We pray you have a blessed night. And we appreciate you guys. All right. All right.